I know I'm a little late to this one, but since I didn't have anything else to review this week, I decided to talk about Steven Spielberg's West Side Story, a new adaptation of the famous Broadway show and a remake of the Best Picture winning film adaptation from 1961. It's a story that I feel is ingrained in our culture enough that most people know what it's about or at least can recognize a reference to it even if they've never seen it. Set in the slums of Manhattan, West Side Story is a 1950s Romeo and Juliet musical about a Puerto Rican girl played by Rachel Ziegler and a white paroled convict portrayed by Ansel Elgort. Because of the differences in their ethnic backgrounds, the relationship is taboo, and the racial status quo of the time that threatens to divide them is enforced by two gangs who fight for territory in the city's west side. I predict for most people, their enjoyment of this movie will be higher the more familiar or in love with the original the viewer is. I've seen the original, although it has been quite a few years, and personally, it isn't one of my all-time favorites. It was directed by Robert Wise, who made quite a few movies in the 1950s and 60s that are both iconic and significant, but I don't consider West Side Story to rank among them. It's a traditional Hollywood romance musical with memorable choreography, but also has some very stilted acting and tepid chemistry between its leads. With that said, I was still interested in seeing how Spielberg could reshape and possibly outdo a six decade old film that clearly left room to improve. I'll just cut to the chase and say that West Side Story 2021 joins the handful of blockbuster remakes that do in fact surpass the original, but not without an asterisk attached. Where this version outdoes the original is not just in acting, but in technical aspects as well. The cinematography is much more energized and creative, and really puts you in the center of the action instead of positioning you like an audience member watching the show on stage, only seeing what's happening from one single angle. However, this is where most of what this movie does better ends, and what it does roughly the same begins. Whether it's a new adaptation for film or an old one for the theater, I don't find West Side Story to be one of the best written stories of all time. Like I said earlier, it's just the story of Romeo and Juliet reimagined with a different setting and time period. The plot's predictable and the characters are flat copies of the ones they're based on from Shakespeare's own creation. The gang leaders, played by Mike Feist and David Alvarez, are supposed to be Mercutio and Tybalt respectively, while Ariana DuBose's Anita, who, like the original, is the best person in the entire movie is based on the nurse. Lots of modern media pulls from other older properties all the time, but the best ones at least have something fresh or new to add. Neither this nor the one from 1961 feel all that special, and that's where they both come up short. While watching it, I couldn't help but continually think back to when I saw John M. Chu's adaptation of In the Heights earlier this year. That was a movie that was familiar, but also a lot more fleshed out and unique. Yeah, the stories have mostly all been heard before, but the characters felt so real and sympathetic thanks largely to its lively and likable cast. The story in West Side Story is so manufactured that its stunning camera work and dance scenes seem to only be there to prop it up. While this version does bring up some true-to-life factors of the changing West Side at the time, socioeconomics and how they related to the setting was something in the Heights explored in much greater depth. Although the story and characters are just as plain as they were in 1961, Spielberg recaptures the appeal of the original and recreates it with a more impressive style. It's a sum what naive but timeless plea for tolerance that is just as relevant now as when the play and first movie debuted during the early stages of the civil rights era. I don't consider it the next La La Land, but I did find in it a pleasing bit of cinematic solace to close out the year on. I'm giving it a 3 out of 4, which is also about what I would rate the original, but I do consider this a superior adaptation, so it's a much fuller, well-rounded 3 than I'd give Wise's version. Thanks for watching.